<clears throat> I know we are all here for some good old camera porn, aren't we? So let's get that over with. This is the Mamiya C330. There is no doubt this is a very sexy camera, but can it perform? We took it out yesterday for the first time in a long time. We shot two rolls and this is what we got.
So my thoughts on the Mamiya C330. The first one is the obvious one, is the size and the weight. This camera is not light, it is very heavy. It is significantly bigger and much, much heavier than the Rolleiflex I was shooting only a few weeks ago. I'd say that it's even heavier than the Bronica, but the advantage is that the lenses, because you can change the lenses in this camera, are much, much lighter than the Bronica's. Actually, I can fit the 80 and the 55 in my back pocket, and that is pretty awesome. More negatives. I'm starting with the negatives first. You can't change the film. Once you load film here, you are stuck with it. Unlike the Bronica, where you have film bags that you can replace, so you can have one roll for the daylight, one roll for night photography, one roll for black and white, one roll for color. This is not the case with this camera. You only have a space for one roll, and that's what you got. It is a twin lens camera. They are not my favorite. They kind of freak me out because I never know what I'm actually capturing. Just as a reminder, you look through here, you can pose through this lens, but the photo is actually taken with this one. That has a ton of advantages. Like there is no vibration. These are mirrorless cameras and you can have an ND filter on this one and still be able to see here. I don't know if that makes up for the disadvantages, though you never know what you are actually composing. The composition is going to be slightly different if you are far away if you are close really close and this camera lets you focus really close you are never gonna get the same thing on the two lenses uh, so i don't know if i get the point of uh, being able to focus so close I guess this is something that it wouldn't be a big deal for my day-to-day -day photography and i could see myself getting used to it but i prefer slrs it is a very complicated camera. It has controls and knobs everywhere. You lock the lens here, so you have to unlock it to change the lens. It has another lock here for the shutter. Then you have to cock the shutter on the lens here. It has a lot of controls and sometimes I wasn't able to shoot it and I wasn't sure about the reason. There are like many variables here to to control. It's once again something that I could get used to with uh, more usage, but it is very complicated, much more complicated than the Rolleiflex where you just have a lock for the shutter and that's pretty much it. Now for the good things, because it has a bunch of advantages. First, it doesn't require batteries, unlike the Bronica, so that's pretty awesome. Second, the finder is gorgeous, it's brighter than my Rolleiflex, it's not as bright as the Bronica, but it is very good. Third, the build quality of this camera is amazing. It feels like a rock and you could kill someone with this. Fourth, the image quality that you get with this camera and these lenses is just outstanding. I was doing a little bit of pixel peeping just because, for the sake of it, to check how good these lenses were and they are too good. Again, that's not something that I necessarily look for in a camera. I kind of destroy my images in post-processing anyway, adding a lot of grain and decreasing the detail because I like my images to look that way. But if you're looking for a medium format camera that can produce outstanding, super high definition images, this is the camera, these are the lenses. It is very good. It came with a strap. I think that's pretty optimistic. I don't know if this is the way you want to carry the camera. I had it like this for an hour yesterday morning and it was fine, but it's not the most comfortable thing. I think that if you're going to be shooting for longer, four to five hours, then I would not recommend doing that. One last thing, you might have noticed that some of the images were blurry. We lost some frames too. Some of those problems were due to our inexperience with this camera, but also also, I believe that there is something wrong with this lens, with the 80 millimeters, because sometimes there is a delay when you press the shutter and when the actual shutter goes off, you can feel like there is a one to two second delay. I don't think that's a feature of the camera or the lens, so I think there is something wrong with it. We were not expecting that and we were just moving the camera away already or maybe shaking it a little bit. And that's uh, why or how we got some blurry shots. Overall, this is a very nice camera. It was very fun to shoot with, but I think I'm ready to go back to my Bronica. So what do you think? Do you have one? Have you used one in the past? Are you planning on getting one? Please share your thoughts in the comments down below. For today, this is all. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.